camera kind of skewed. Here we have a package. Uh, let's open it up, see what's in here. A little snippety snip here. Almost got my thumb, but not quite. All right, and then like a mummy, like a sarcophagus, there is an interior package. Surgical slice right here. It used to be when I unwrapped things, mostly to spite my sister, that I would rip the the, the wrapping paper to shreds. Uh, but now I enjoy the process. Oops, the process of preserving it as much as possible. A cautionary tape. We have here, um, what, can I take this out of the middle? Looks like a fountain pen. Guys, can you guys tell that I took a shower but I just rinsed my hair but didn't wash it? So it's like, like weirdly curly. It's a very weird consistency when I do that. We have this fountain pen here. and this little parcel of papers. There's a lot of incredible scrawlings on here. It says, Dear Peter, please accept this pen as a token of my esteem for your drawing. Isn't this handwriting amazing? This paper is cool too. Your YouTube videos and your view on life. This pen is a Venus president from 1955 or so and still working at 60 years of age as well as it did when it left the factory. Now that it is in your talented hands, it will draw for another 60 years. Keep inspiring drawers, draw, <laughs> drawers <laughs> of all kinds as you have me. Yours, Pierre. And now, drum roll, the actual pen. Oh no, I took the pen out too soon. I, I, <laughs> the pen was supposed to be in here. I, <laughs> can you believe what I've done? I've ruined the whole thing. There's supposed to be this huge, this huge bill. Do you guys love that, uh, the penmanship and stuff for that whole thing? Can you guys did, believe I did that? <laughs> Here's the paper. So this is a 60-year-old pen, 1955. A presidential Venus or something? Oh, Venus President, 1950s, 14 karat gold nib. Not sure how to fill it up, actually. Hope I don't break a 60-year-old pen. Is this little thing here come open? 
Am I breaking it? Here's my bottle of ink. Noodlers. You put the fountain pen in there, and then you open this lever. Right? Oh! Did I just break everything forever? It's not like a great sound. Hopefully I didn't damage anything irreversibly. This is such a cool pen. Let's get in. I'm getting distracted. I'm getting distracted. All right. Let's draw, let's draw a picture. All right, so then I began drawing using Borden and Riley number 234 Paris paper for pens. I think it's a great compromise between um, a very a sturdier paper like Bristol and a flimsier, smoother paper, like what seems to be popular a lot among a lot of calligraphy and fountain pen enthusiasts, um, which is a paper like Rhodia paper. Rhodia paper is very, very thin, uh, but also very slick. Calligraphy and fountain pen enthusiasts tend to like um, slick and unabsorbent paper because they they have all these fancy shimmering and sheening inks that look that look just amazing and uh, beautiful and magical and it just sits on top of the paper um but it also that, that that tends to be a little bit more problematic when you're drawing and you want to put your hand down on top of some of your completed drawing so i like to lean towards some papers that are a little bit more absorbent like this Paris paper for pens, which is still very smooth, which is nice for fountain pen drawing, but a little bit more absorbent. That way the ink does seep in, it does dry a little bit, doesn't just sit on top, and it's not it's just not just a big smear fest, right? Just not it's just not so smudge tastic the whole time. I'm a big proponent of embracing the smudge, but it doesn't mean that I'm trying to get more smudges than I really need. A lot of the time, if I'm using other pens, like uh, my rotorings, roach rings, I just, I like going with the, the Bristol paper that's even thicker than the Paris paper. And one step beyond that um, is the Canson um, Crescent, I mean the Crescent Render paper, yes. And it, that stuff feathers a lot. Anyways, well, it's not, sorry, Todd, I'm not like a, a paper scientist or anything. What, what? What do you take to be a paper, paper scientist? You go, what do you go into textiles or something? Um, I guess some, some papers are like very nice cotton, very nice watercolor papers are made out of cotton, but most of them I suppose are made out of some sort of pulpy, goopy, munched up, completely uh, kind of oatmealed trees, right? And that's how papers work. I need to watch a how it's made for paper perhaps. I feel like I've got the lowdown on it at some point in my life, but um, it's become fuzzier over the years somehow. I started assuming things, and maybe that's not good. Anyways, this pen's very cool. I'm very honored to have it. Thank you, Pierre, for sending it to me. Check out his website, link in the description, of course. Check him out, he's very talented, uh, as you can see by just the things he scrawled across that, what was that, like a seismograph paper? I don't know, it seemed very official. Um, a 60-year-old, wait, 1950s, 60, it could be more than 60 years, 60 years old, I don't know. Thank you so much for sending this. A, a gold nib, it definitely flexes more, and I dare say, that sounds pretentious saying I dare say, I do dare to say that this, um, the lines that this pen created with the, you know, you can press hard to make a thicker line or or draw sideways because it doesn't have like a ballpoint tip as much as it just have, it does have a bit of the um, calligraphy effect. Like you can draw sideways to make a thin one or you, you can get so many different effects with it. And it reminded me more of drawing with a a brush and ink than with uh, more of the pens that, that I've ever used. Really, really. Anyone who's use like a very fine tip brush to do some inking, um, might recognize or know the feeling of these some of these lines that I've been putting down. You push a little harder, you get a thicker line. Go very gently, barely touch the pen to the paper, you get a thinner line. Depending on how you hold the pen, I don't know. It's very cool, and I didn't even have to refill it even once. 
I didn't even know what I was doing when I was filling it up with that weird little the lever action. Uh, and it, it was working great. It wasn't even smudging too much. There was this weird thing going on where sometimes you know how the nib it has like two... The nib is constructed of two prongs going out, touching each other, like some sort of... Uh, is that capillary action? How the ink travels between the two prongs of the nib? You know, I think sometimes those would like twang against each other or get caught on each other, like like a very tiny version of tectonic plates making earthquakes. There'd be a tiny nib quake and little flicks and flecks of ink would go flying off across the paper like randomized stippling. And I think this would be a cool way to do randomized stippling if you really knew how to control it, but better, a better way to do randomized stippling uh, would probably just to be get it, to go get your dad's toothbrush, dip that in ink, and just run your thumb across that like that was, a, that was a terrible sound effect, like... Uh, the little... Anyways, you could also get any stiff bristled brush um, if you're f afraid of what your dad might do if he found you inked his toothbrush. Uh, but, um, but yeah, this I had a great time. It worked great. Uh, this cool drawing. It uh, I don't really know what else to say, but it turned out to be some kind of... Uh, hooved chicken abomination and I there's nothing really to say except thank you for sending this pen Pier. Uh very honored to have it it's definitely you know you think of with 60 year old pens it's cool to think about how many lines it's it's drawn through its life it's cool to have a new pen because you get to draw the first lines with it maybe and there for the beginning of its life, but an old pen, you think it's got all these lines in its history already. Anyways, anyways, okay. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye. It's all right. All right. All right. Goodbye.